Coming up on Ann Arbor tonight, we have a great show for you. We have interview guest filmmaker Christina Morales Hemingway. We have comic J.R. Williams and music by C. Osage. Yeah. Great show. You know, it's interesting. I found out something very, very unique uh, earlier this week. Did you guys know it takes a half a dozen sheep to make a sweater? Well, I don't know about you guys. I didn't even know they could knit. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you hear about the basketball player whose shoes exploded on the court? Yeah, I know. It was crazy. His shoes exploded. Yeah, well, I guess he lost his grip on the game. <laughs> yeah, you know, a friend of mine just got married, went on his honeymoon last week, super happy for both of them. But he did reach out to me, and he said, Zach, I was on my honeymoon, and then my wife, she asks me, well, hey, uh, am I your first? And then he goes, I thought to myself, why does everybody ask me that question? <laughs> yeah, in local news, the city of Ann Arbor is gearing up for spring, or in other words, construction. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's interesting, until uh, I was in the Boy Scouts uh, for a long time, really great organization, enjoyed being outdoors, and I realized that until about 15, as a young man, I was a Boy Scout. Well, but then you become a Girl Scout. <laughs> uh, folks, we have a great show for you this evening, so please stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ann Arbor tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, folks, I am so excited to introduce our feature interview guest for the evening. We have filmmaker and our own Ann Arborite, Christina Morales Hemingway. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. My goodness. And Christina, it is such a pleasure to have you, and I must say, you look amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Maybe yes. it's the dress. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, but you know, I mean, just first of all, uh, yes. thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, and, you know, very interesting film, Bride Plus One. <laughs> Why are you in this That's dress? That's right. That's right. <laughs> you just felt like, no, I, but Bride Plus One is a comedy, and it's about a 39-year-old Latina who has never been married, but wants kids and sends out a save the date invitation uh, notice for her wedding and all her loved ones. And even though she has no groom yet, she figures that if she builds it, her groom will come. Yes. <laughs> so yes. The, hence the bride costume. But yes. I wanted to know my, from you. And my little plus one. Yes. Over and here. Yes. Plus one. I must say, he's a very, very good posture. Yes, yeah. yes. He's a little stiff, but, yeah, a little but, bit. He, but he's, he's my guy. Doesn't argue back much. Yeah, yeah. I like this about him. Yeah, <laughs> he's quiet. That's right. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I wanted to know from you, uh, just can you talk about how did the idea like for the film come about? And can you talk about sort of the film and what excites you about the project? Oh, I would go on forever if I did that, but I'll, sure. I'll try and crystallize it. Sure. Um, so the thing that made me write the film was couple of girlfriends of mine at the same time um, got dumped by men that had kept them in relationship longer than basically they they had said they wanted children sure um, but then realized they didn't want children mm. after it was too late for my girlfriends oh my god so being that I'm a mother myself I almost wanted more for them than they do sure um, so I kind of channeled my frustration about that yeah. through this script right. and uh, it became a comedy. Wow. Wow. And I mean, you know, can you talk about too, I mean, it's such an original story idea. Uh, uh, you know, again, I think it's great that you are able to tell that story because obviously they're not alone, right? There's other people and relationships that have gone through the similar challenge, but the fact that you've been able to turn it into a comedy, which is something that people can relate to, but also laugh about. Yeah. Um, you know, what kind of feedback have you gotten and, and what are you excited about? Oh, well, I'm excited about so much. The, the ensemble cast is just, it's 
almost all Latino cast, wow. which is really wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, such a blast to shoot. Um, some of our cast members, uh, were in Will and Grace and Independence Day yep. and uh, Green Book yep. um, most recently. Yep. Um, so I'm very excited about the cast. Um, I'm excited about just um, putting things out there like sure. this sure. Um, in terms of the response that I've gotten. Of course, it resonates mostly with women, sure. probably of a certain age, that um, their biological clock is ticking, so right. they can really relate to that. Right. But there's one scene where I do about a four-minute rant mm. about online dating. Mm. And so far, all the men that I have shown it to are, are like, can we pause it right there? I just want to take notes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it seems to have a crossover appeal sure. with both men and women and Latino audiences and mainstream audiences. Wow. So. Awesome. And of course, uh, you're going to share a clip with us uh, this evening, so I'm going to take a quick pause okay. and uh, we'll take a look. Great. Shh, I get the Mommy, 40 is not a bad word. What a great clip. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness. My goodness, that's awesome. I mean, really, really excited for Bride Plus One. Very interesting uh, tidbit about you. You know, you grew up uh, here in Ann Arbor. So yes. So you are an Ann Arbor darling, uh, if, <laughs> Thank if you, you will. And, but you split time uh, between Ann Arbor and Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. I wanted to know first, what, you know, got you interested in, in being a filmmaker and making films? Well, uh, at first I wanted to be an actress, uh, so uh, I did pretty much everything I could in Ann Arbor, zero to 18, and then I moved out to Los Angeles, and I went to CalArts out there, and I was in the acting program. Uh, but then I realized that I didn't like it as much as the writing and the directing. Mm. So I got behind the camera and realized that I that's where I really flourished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, of course you do a great job and of course uh, something that I think is really unique about you and you and I had learned this I would learned this about you early on like getting to know you but you had actually had the opportunity uh, to study with the great Marcel Marceau and for those that don't know uh, Marcel Marceau was a French actor and a mime an artist most famous for his stage portrayal of uh, Bip the Clown and he referred to mime as the art of silence, and he performed professionally and worldwide for over 60 years, yeah. which is incredible. So how has this experience influenced you as a performer and an artist? You know, it influences me, I could say, maybe every day. Uh, one, he gave me the life maxim that I li live by, which I'll share with you in a moment. Sure. Um, and number also go into corporations and I teach about nonverbal communication and mm. body language. Wow. So thank goodness, I mean, he, he, he gave me my bread and butter sure. um, career, yeah. really. Um, and there was a time uh, where we were at Huron High School, oh yeah, <laughs> and I was late for a class and he said to me, um, he said, what's the difference between an actor and a star? Mm. And I was 17 at the time, and I said, well, an actor is one who acts. Right. Uh, a star is just someone who thinks that they do. And um, that was really precocious of me to say to a star, but uh, he said, no. An actor is one who acts. A star is a beaming light that shines throughout the universe. So be that. Mm. So that really became my life maxim. So I feel very grateful to him um, almost daily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and how incredible that he was here in Ann Arbor. Yes. You said it, here on high school. Did he come to Ann Arbor often? Or? I don't know about prior to that. He had, um, Brian Trim was a student of his in Paris. Okay. And then they were going to create a world center for mime here in Ann Arbor. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the uh, facility wasn't built yet. Okay. So in return for using here on high school, they offered two scholarships to uh, high school students. So okay. I was in high school at the time and ended up 
earning a full scholarship to yes. like study with the most incredible minds in the world. So yeah. very, very grateful for that experience. Oh no, that is such an amazing story. Yeah. And I mean, I, I love that about him, you know, be the beaming light, you know, be that. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's so true, you know, I think positivity is something that is contagious and, and I think it's always needed. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what great wisdom he had. Yeah. Uh, and here's something too that I really, really admire about you. I mean, you wear a lot of hats uh, when working on a project. A lot of veils. <laughs> that's right, a lot of veils. And you know, often directing and acting uh, in a project that you're doing. Uh, but some have been known to say, I guess, well, wait a minute, Christina, if, if you're acting, then how are you directing? And if you're directing, then how are you acting? Like, how, yes. does, that, how does that work, right? So uh, can you talk about sort of the balance and, and how you're able to do that? Also act in a film that you're directing and direct in a film that you're acting. Yeah, well, two things. One, because I was an actress first, uh, I'm considered more of an actor-director, so okay. I really know the acting process. So when I'm directing other actors, mm -hmm. I kind of uh, know how to give space for their creativity to sure, come out. Sure. Um, and then in terms of the actual practicality of it, luckily we have digital um, uh, monitors and readouts, so I will uh, do the scene, and then I'll play it back and I'll watch it. And frankly, I have to watch it twice because you know how when you're looking at a picture, you always look at yourself first yeah. and yeah. see how you look in the picture? Yeah, you do. Okay, so I watch myself and I criticize myself. <laughs> I get that out of the way. Okay. And then I watch it again wow. for the scene and how it, it fits in the movie. Sure. Um, so yeah, I love, I love directing. Um, if I had my druthers, I would just direct. Okay. Um, but I enjoy acting. Too. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, of course, you do a great job. And Thank to be you. able to balance, I guess, the complex ability of, you know, telling a great story, uh, putting your vision on screen and making that a reality, but then also being conscious of your own performance. You know, a lot of actors, uh, uh, at least from, you know, what I've heard, you know, they're concerned about, of course, their performance. and what they have to do and their responsibilities and then they're able to sort of go home uh, and that's it and then the director and, and you know editors mm -hmm. work it out mm -hmm. uh, whereas with you you're worried about all of that and, and not worried per se but but you have that on your forefront of thought you know? right but in some ways it helps that I'm the writer because I'm servicing the script sure right so I'm in some ways thinking more about what I want to happen yep. than I am about my own performance which yeah. makes me less self-conscious gotcha. so wow. that in a way is a little bit helpful yeah that's awesome uh, one of the things too is you've always been known since I've known you uh, to really carry yourself well uh, and have a smile. Uh, why do you think, because uh, we talked about positivity, positivity earlier uh, with that quote from Marcel Marceau, uh, but why in your mind uh, is a positive mind frame important? Two things, since we brought up Marcel Marceau, sometimes it's about just putting yourself in the, that physiology, mm. right? So. Um, he had a saying, sometimes if you, if you put yourself in prayer position long enough, you'll end up praying. Right. So sometimes fake it till you make it, you know, and just take the posture of it. And sometimes it actually, then you, you, then you start to feel it, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's one thing. And then on the other, um, I guess I've just always, maybe not always, but I'm at a place in my life where I feel like there's an aspect of me that just knows that all is well all mm. the time. Mm. And... Uh, I look at it kind of as that might be my executive producer <laughs> and then I have the per part of me that's on stage sure. that is the actor sure. that just wants to feel all the emotions of being human yeah. and yeah. and all of that so it's it's kind of just having a simultaneous presence of of knowing that all is well all the time and that I'm here to be as fully human as I can possibly be and right. experience the gamut of all there is to experience. Awesome. Well, and I think, you know, again, you do that. You definitely embrace life and live it to the fullest. Thank and you. I, I really admire that about you. Thank you. Yeah. And I have to say you too. Oh, you know, thank you. that you wow, really, you have such yeah. a great presence. And <laughs> I remember from the first time that I met you, uh, at, I think it was in a, um, was it a film? Yeah, uh, it, was it was Ann Arbor Film Festival. I think yes. it was the uh, outdoor 
uh, screening they have in the summer. Yeah, just such a friendly, open presence, and Thank I you. really, really appreciate that. And a little known fact, studio audience, <laughs> is that Zach actually has a cameo <laughs> in Bright Plus One. That's so right. So yeah, I'm that's very right. um, excited Thank you. to show that off. Yeah, 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 it was so much fun, you guys. I mean, yeah. Christina is just so great. Oh, uh, you. you were just really, really fun on set. It was just a blast, great that energy. Uh, and feeds, uh, feeds you very, very well. <laughs> so we had, we had great food. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, another thing, too, is that, uh, you know, being a long time, you know, Ann Arborite and growing up in Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. what I wanted to know from you, if someone has never visited Ann Arbor before, right, but they're watching this right now, mm -hmm. why should they visit Ann Arbor? You know, um, I looked at many places to live uh, when we were deciding on leaving Los Angeles to have children. Sure. And, um, I kept coming back to Ann Arbor mm. because A, it's really good for children, it's got a, a community, um, but I, I haven't found that many other places that have um, the small town intimacy right. without the small town mentality. Mm. Um, I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for saying that. Um, <laughs> okay, Dexter and all the surrounding cities, we love you too. <laughs> but um, for me, uh, because of the university, it feels like it's really multicultural. Right. There's a lot of art happening, and that was really important to me. Mm -hmm. So nice. I would say come, come visit Ann Arbor for, for all that it has to offer, yeah, um, the diversity mm. and, um, and the culture. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I couldn't agree more with you. Um, I feel very grateful. And, you know, as you said, Ann Arbor is just rich with culture, rich with education. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a very special thing. Yeah. Um, another question for you, too. What has been uh, one of the latest films that you've seen that you've really enjoyed? Well, actually, I mentioned it earlier, was Green Book. Oh, So okay. um, because. Uh, the guy that plays Manny, who's one of my perspective uh, grooms, sure. is in Green Book, oh my and gosh. that it's up for an Academy Award, so wow. that's really exciting for us. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed the film. It was uh, great performances and just a really uh, deeply felt story and, and funny at times, too. So. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it's a great story. So it takes place, what, in the 20s, I believe it is, or is it a different time? I don't the year I'm okay. sorry no that's okay yeah but it um, is a period piece yeah it's a period yeah I've heard great mm -hmm. things I haven't seen it but of course I'm gonna mosey on over to the state and uh, take a gander at that film Good. definitely yeah, you should. Uh, lastly for all the young artists out there mm -hmm. uh, that are watching this the young artists that say no I you know this is what I want to dedicate my life to I don't care you know this is what I want to do I've gravitated towards this mm -hmm. what advice do you have for them well uh, again, I would say two things. One is find, not necessarily a B plan, mm. but you know, as an artist, there are so many ups and downs. So yes, find something consistent that you can do, that you're good at, that people need, right. so that you have something for the lean times. Right. Um, and then just keep on putting your stuff out just keep on expressing don't worry until it's like that it's perfect don't don't put it out when it's perfect just keep on putting it out and you'll find your group of people that resonate with it and collaborate with many different people mm. um, so yeah i love that yeah. thank you yeah great advice and can i put in a plug for Bride plus of one course. before of we course. go. <laughs> of course. Of course. I didn't wear this dress for nothing, no, honey. <laughs> definitely, please. Okay. Definitely so, please. yes, we are um, having a screening. It's an advanced screening of uh, Bride plus one at the Michigan Theater. Uh, it's $12 to get in because it's kind of a fundraiser mm -hmm. in that um, the actors were amazing to work on our um, project for next to nothing. <laughs> um, but in order for us to release it nationally, we need to pay the deferments. So we've got a 1,600 seat theater. We want to get it full That's right. um, so that we can actually raise some money to pay the deferments and we are encouraging people to wear their favorite uh, wedding gown or 
their favorite tux. There we go. Or their tackiest braidsmaid dress. Okay. So uh, awesome. it should be a very fun event. It is uh, April 27th Got at it. 3 p.m. Okay. At Michigan Theater. All right. And what a great venue. Perfect venue to have it at. April 27th, folks, 3 p.m. Yes. Make sure that you get your tickets uh, to this wonderful event and support Bride Plus One and Christina. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the United Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick break, folks, and we'll be right back. Hey, Peanut, guess what? What? Alicia is on Camp TV. Let's watch it. I don't really feel like it. Well, why? Because I want to watch the interview with the mayor of Ann Arbor. Well, guess uh, what? Right, what? Well, <laughs> Alicia is interviewing the mayor. Oh, Billy, that's awesome. Okay, I'll watch it. Yay! All right, folks. Please give a warm Ann Arbor Tonight welcome for our comic guest, Mr. J.R. Williams, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's sweet. I appreciate that. I, uh, I'm a proud father of four children. A lot of people look at me like I'm Amish when I tell them I have four kids. Um, <laughs> having four kids is great. Uh, there's always somebody crying, though, in our house. It's usually me. Uh, <laughs> I'm hiding in the bathroom a lot. That's what I do. Um, my outlook on my kids is pretty much the same outlook I have on our Detroit Lions, actually. <laughs> like, I'm, you guys are Lions fans, right? Of course. Yeah, of course you are. Uh, so my outlook is this. Like, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I don't expect much. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Uh, as, except for when it comes to my youngest. Her name's Amelia. She's two years old, and she's currently my favorite child out of the four. That's right. When I said favorite, you're allowed to have a favorite. <laughs> um, she's really adorable. I'll show you guys pictures later. It's great. Uh, we spend a lot of time together, so we do uh, tea parties a lot. Uh, tea parties actually consist of me uh, laying on the couch watching Netflix, <laughs> and she brings me little cups of water in her Peppa Pig tea set. And it is really adorable, I'm not going to lie. Really adorable. Um, we spent all day doing this. Um, my wife gets home, and I'm like, hey, you got to check this out. This is great. And I'm like, sweetie, can daddy have some tea? And she's like, yep. Jumps up, runs off those little legs. She comes back, and she's got that cup in her hand. She's going really slow. I take a drink. She's like, more? And I said, yes, please. I give it back to her. She runs off again. And then I look at my wife, and I'm like, well. And she's like, um this is what you've been doing all day long? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, hmm. You know the only place she can get water from is the toilet, right? <laughs> uh, I did not know that. <laughs> I know that at all. Apparently I've been drinking toilet water for years. Uh, it made me glad that we weren't having lemonade, though. That's for sure. That's, that would have been a bit much for me. Uh, but it also explained why the scones were a bit nutty, I think. It's uh, weird. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm what I like to refer to as a, an effective parent. My wife is a good parent. I'm pretty effective. Um, <laughs> our uh, youngest, she's, like I said, she's two. She's great. But she thinks she's an independent woman already. She doesn't want to hold hands in parking lots. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to a Walmart parking lot. Uh, but that's not a good idea. <laughs> and so she kept pulling away from my wife, so I finally got a hold of her. And I'm like, sweetie, you can't do that. You got to watch out. Like, you know, I was like, you see all these little greasy spots in the pavement? Like, those were kids. <laughs> like, that, that one actually backfired because now I carry her everywhere we go. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, our oldest went through a phase where she liked to eat a lot of candy. And my wife sat her down, and she's like, um, you know, uh, uh, if you keep eating all the candy, then the bacteria in your mouth will eat the sugar, excrete an acid that erodes your enamel. And you can't talk like that to a six-year-old. So I sat her down, and I was like, look, sweetie, if you don't stop eating all that candy, tiny bugs are going to crap in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Now you can't even pay her to eat a Snickers bar. 
<laughs> Rich, she hates Halloween. It works out great for me. Either way, I'm good with it, man. I'm good. So, um, <laughs> my, uh, my wife and I uh, have been together for 20 years. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've been married for 16 of those 20 years. Uh, it's, it's fine. Um, it's what it is. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> we do pretty well for two people that met and don't have anything in common, like, whatsoever. <laughs> um, we, uh, like, my wife has a master's degree in psychology from an actual university. <laughs> and I've been to three of the finest community colleges in the state of Michigan. And I don't even have a credit. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Um, that's, yeah, just one of the many things, really. Um, she likes to mingle at crowds at our school functions, and I don't <laughs> like to at all. But I went to one recently. And I'm standing back at the corner, and she's off doing her thing. And this couple next to me starts arguing. And the lady's mad because the guy spanked their son. And I was like, well, OK, I know him. He probably deserved it, first of all. <laughs> and, uh, they noticed me listening. And so the guy looks at me and goes, hey, man, you got kids? <laughs> like, well, I'm not here to pick one out. Um, that's, that's not how we're doing things now. I was like, yes, yes, I do. And he goes, oh, you ever spank him? <laughs> no. No, I have not. The wife can't believe it. Comes around the corner and says, well, what about your wife? It's like, yeah, I spank her all the time. What? <laughs> um, my wife no longer makes me go to functions anymore, so that worked out in my favor. <laughs> Probably for the best. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my wife's a cat person. I'm not. I'm a dog person. <laughs> like, the only thing I think cats have going for them is they don't wake me up at 3 in the morning barking at dumb crap. That's the only <laughs> thing. That's it. Other than that, we're fine. Um, but she loves the cats, and I don't. And one of the main arguments we always have is the litter box in our house. Because we always try all these different kinds of litters. We always try all these different ways to make things, like, not smell. And my whole suggestion is not have a box of crap in the house. That's like all I got. It seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, plus, cats just... They remind me of a bully I had in seventh grade. You guys, I don't know if you're going to agree with this or not. But they're, I just think cats are really arrogant, and they're constantly always trying to show you their butthole. So it's like, whatever it works. Did you guys go to a nicer school than I did? Probably, yeah, okay. That's good. That's good. Um, another favorite thing about my kids is that uh, I think kids are really gullible. That's one of my favorite things about my kids. Like, my kids think it's illegal to talk in the car if dad's driving more than 70 miles an hour on the highway. <laughs> that saves your sanity. Uh, my kids currently think the ice cream truck plays music when it's out of ice cream. <laughs> that one's a money saver. Um, I don't like to share food, obviously. <laughs> that wasn't that funny. Uh, so if I'm sitting down and having a bowl of Cocoa Puffs one morning like an adult, and these <laughs> kids come in, they're like, hey, Dad, what you having? It's like, Cocoa Puffs? Can I have some? <laughs> and I'm like, have some? <laughs> no, you cannot have some. <laughs> they're like, why? And I'm like, I got the spicy ones again. <laughs> and then he's mad. He's like, man, Dad, I got spicy Cocoa Puffs. My oldest is like the Mexican chocolate? And I was like, yeah. Which <laughs> disturbs me, because two of these four kids can read. So I think we have to have a little talk with the school on that one there. Cool. Thank you, guys. I'm Jerry Williams. Appreciate your time. Stop doesn't mean kind of stop. It means stop. All the way. Period. Look, cross, live. It's common sense. Use the crosswalks. Stand out and stay alive. Day or night, wear something bright. Don't walk means don't walk. Come on, you're smarter than that. Bus, then stop. See a bus, see a sign, then stop. Phone down, heads up. Dying to respond? Don't, it can wait. A2 be safe. A2 be safe. A2 be safe. Everywhere. Everyone. Every day. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ann Arbor tonight.
Thank you. Thank you. Man, J.R. Williams, everybody. How funny. My goodness. Thank oh, man. you. Dude, that was funny stuff. I mean, four kids, that's got to be a lot of work. Um, I don't know. My wife does it all. <laughs> not on me. I'm hilarious. hardly ever home. Yeah. Well, I mean, how is it like for like, you know, holidays and stuff? Is it hectic? I mean, well, you know, uh, but daddy, I want this. Daddy, I want, you know. No, they all get the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, nothing. Um, <laughs> oh, it depends on how good they are. They know that. Right, right. No, the holidays are just hectic because we have like her family. Yeah. Then my parents are divorced, so there's two other families. <laughs> oh, jeez. So like usually like we spend the entire month of December having Christmas. Yeah. And it's awful. Oh. It was awful. <laughs> this year we did it all in one weekend and it was perfect. That, wow, really? Yeah. I don't know how it happened. Yeah. I mean, was it like a blur before you knew it was over and you were like, wow. You know? Oh, no, it drags on. <laughs> yeah, because it's time to get together. Right, so, yeah. right. Yep, for sure. No, but, but I mean, uh, just interesting stuff. So, I mean, you were, first of all, you've just uh, recorded in an album, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank that's you. awesome. Yeah. Um, I recorded my first album, actually, in Gaylord, where we live. Oh, my gosh. So, that was fun to be able to do that there. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and then you just got off this tour, which is incredible. I mean, it's 12 shows, 12 days, seven different states. How was it? I mean, being on the road um, like that? Yeah, you get a lot of romantic ideas about what a tour is. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of driving, and that's about it. Yeah. It's, that's like all you do is drive. Sure. It was like drive, hotel, show, drive, hotel, show. Wow. That was it. Wow. But it was, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was a good experience. So. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure, man. Uh, can you talk to me? I mean, like, so... Do you have any like weird road road stories that ever happened? Like any like weird funny things that happened? To you? Um, I had to do some shows in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. So I walked around downtown in my Michigan State hoodie. Oh um, man. <laughs> man. Yeah, they uh, they did not enjoy that. No. <laughs> no. Well, and I mean, you know, being in Ann Arbor, obviously we're Wolverine fans, but that's all right. We'll, we'll let my you dad's slide. a Wolverine fan. Oh, is he yeah, really? Yeah. So I mean, was that? Tough? I was a Wolverine fan when I was a kid, just because I didn't know any better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good money, but that's funny. No, I mean, but you know, hey, man, I mean, uh, g growing up in Flint, though, you said you grew up on a farm, so, like, yeah. kind of what was that? Like, what type of farm was it? We just had horses. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice, yeah. man. That's about it. Now, did you guys breed them for, like, racing? Or no, just we like... just rode them, and oh. we boarded horses. Cool, yeah. man. So, I mean, uh, so you just grew up riding and stuff. Did yeah. you mostly do Western, or were you like. We did Western, yeah. Okay. I showed 4 H Western, yeah. Nice. That man. was a lifetime ago, and I didn't know if I wanted people to know about that. I forgot about that. <laughs> Well, um. I always thought it was funny because you had like you, you have the dressage people, right? That like yeah, wear these the, like they, jackets and they're they like think yes, they're better I, than you. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, and it's like yeah. geez. Well, I mean, I don't know if they think that, but you oh, know. they do. <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> but no, that's awesome, man. I mean, because uh, you know, I grew up riding too, like in Ann Arbor, and you know, I just think it's just awesome being on a horse. You know, I mean, you're you're. It was it, yeah, it was great growing yeah. up. It's, I don't remember the last time I've been on a horse now. Sure. Like I left home at seventeen. Wow. So. Yeah, that, that's, hey man, but still, that's that's awesome. So as far as comedy, I wanted to know too, Jr. Like, like why comedy for you? Um, I think I was just gonna fall into it eventually. I'm a middle child. My parents are divorced, so anything for attention is great for hey, me. Hey, that's a perfect. <laughs> <recipe>. Right, <laughs> it is. So yeah. comedy is great because all the attention's on you. Right. Um, I got started late. Like I just started five years ago. Oh, did you? I was in my late thirties. I was at a comedy show in Traverse City. Oh, nice. I went to check one out, and I was waiting to get in. And I was talking to people around me, and they were all laughing. And the guy that booked the show was standing next to me, and I didn't know it. Oh, okay. So afterwards, he asked me if I ever thought about doing comedy, and I was like, no. <laughs> he's like, do you want to try it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> he's like, cool, okay, I'll put you on in two months. You need 10 minutes of material, let's go. Oh, my gosh. And I did my first show, and it was awful. Oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, I had no timing, no delivery. I was standing there in shorts. Oh, jeez. Chewing gum, reading these big eight and a half by 11 pages that had the jokes on them. But the jokes worked. That was the great thing. So once they started laughing, I was just hooked, and I've been doing it ever since. Oh, man. And, you know, I I've heard the same thing. You know, it's like that first initial step that you take. Just yeah. to get up there, get on stage, get in front of people uh, is, like, the biggest one. Yeah, right? it I mean, definitely Because it's is, like yeah. you they're there to laugh. Right. It's amazing how many people that's like their biggest fear to get over is just to be able to stand up in front of somebody. Right. Which it's, I don't, it wasn't a big deal for me. Right. I just, I don't know why, but, um, but that seemed to be people's uh, hardest thing. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, you've done it. And I think, you know, five years in, that's awesome. And you seem to be just, you know, on the awesome track. I mean, talk about, 
you know, who are your big comic influences now that you're kind of like into comedy? Are there people that you, you know, work with or people that you watch definitely want to emulate like some of the old times? Um, yeah. Uh, before I even started doing comedy, uh, Detroit comedian Dave Landau. Oh, yeah. Um, he was kind of like my little Yoda. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he helped me out when I first started. Like, he even helped me write some of my first jokes. Nice. He's, he's been great. He's always there for advice. He's He's been the one sure. that's helped me a lot. So that's my local guy that's that I look up to a lot, even though he's shorter than I am <laughs> by a lot. Um, sorry, Dave. Uh, like on a national level, I like Patton Oswalt a oh, lot. Yeah. Like yeah. he's a dad. I like a lot of these guys that are just dads. They're like it's something I have in common with them yep. that I like. I think a lot of people can relate to that because there's a lot of people, hey, they have families and they go, gee, man, do people know how funny this is? Well, guess right? what? Yeah. You do. You know? Yeah, and if people don't have kids, it's like a warning to them. <laughs> Right. That's, all good too. that's right. I mean, uh, yeah. It's worth it. Yeah, oh no, totally, totally. Totally worth it. It's just, yeah. well, for me, it's worth it for the material. Yeah, oh yeah. So that's why. Heck yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you think one of your kids will be a stand up one day? Uh, our seven year old son, Jackson, um, already loves telling knock knock jokes at the dinner table. Oh, that's so awesome. So that is a great thing. I, I really like that. Hey, so if, I think he'll do it. Uh, my oldest, Emma, um, I've had to block some of my videos on YouTube because she was looking me up. Oh, really? Um, she's very interested in what I do. Okay. And she always wants to go to, to shows with me and stuff. Yeah. So I think she, and she's always on stage now. Oh, cool. She's into acting and stuff like that. So that's been going really good. And that, I'll go to pick her up from practice and people are like, gee, I wonder where she gets her love from the stage. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it must be her mom. I don't know. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, will you think you'll eventually one day when she gets older, you know, take her to a club? I told her when she's old enough, I will take her on tour with me if I have to. There you go. Yep. That's awesome. Um, I did a show in Kalkaska for Commission on Aging. It was a clean show, so I was able to bring her. And this was years ago. So she was like maybe eight or nine years old. Okay. And um, I had her. She introduced me. And oh it was, wow! I, I had I had to find the video. It was the cutest thing because she just she walks up and grabs the microphone. She's like, "Good evening, everybody. <laughs> My dad's gonna do comedy for you. His name's J.R. Williams, and he's very funny." That's and so everybody funny. started to laugh. And so I just walked up and I handed her twenty bucks and just sent her off the stage. So, <laughs> like, thanks for the intro, kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, that's Great. cool. You know, to to be able to incorporate your kids like that and have to have them be so supportive and have that zeal for what you do too. I think. You know, it says a lot about you, right? And and how you guys are teaching your kids too. So. Oh yeah, I mean we, well, there's lots of laughs at the house all the time. So. That's good, man. My wife won't admit it, but she's really funny too. <laughs> yeah. I run everything by her. Like I'll write a joke and I'll run it by her, and she'll be like, Nah, don't do that. I'll be like, Ah, what do you know? <laughs> and then I will go and do it at a show, and it totally bombs. Oh. And I'm like, Dang it, she was right the whole time. Yeah. So she's great for that. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And then, too, I mean, so talk about this comedy album. I mean, you just recorded it. Was the experience kind of what you thought it was going to be? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much just like doing a normal show in front of a bunch of family and friends, and just I didn't even think about that it was being recorded, really. I oh, just, cool. I just treated it like it was just a normal, everyday show, and that's how we went with it. So it worked out pretty good. Cool, man. Yeah. And, and for those that want to, like, continue to see you, uh, or just keep up with what you're doing. I mean, how can they find you? How can they? Um, I'm on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as uh, at JR Stands Up. Okay. Uh, when I started doing comedy, my brother-in-law over in the Netherlands created a Facebook page for me. Oh wow! And he called it JR Stands Up, <laughs> so I just went with it. That's cool. Wow, your brother-in-law lives in the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah. Yep, wow. Yeah. Like, have you ever been there? Like, not yet. Oh really? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They want me to go there and do comedy, and I just haven't made my way there yet. Sure, yeah, no problem. I mean, I've heard it's great out there. They have, like, the best beer. Right? Beer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got good beer, too. I heard that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Man. I, heard, I heard something about coffee shops, too. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Heck, yeah, man. Well, no, I definitely wish you the best, J.R. Williams, and your new uh, comedy album. What's it called? Is um, there a name Actually, yet? there's not a name yet. Oh, okay. I was <laughs> thinking about having a competition online on Facebook to see Oh, I was going to say, it. we could come up with some names right now. Oh, yeah, we could do that, okay. right? Do you want, okay. Uh, well, I have a, I wish I could show it. I have a picture of me that I took when I was on tour in front of a sign at a restaurant in Pennsylvania. Okay. And it said, smile, you're in Pennsylvania. And I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was thinking about putting that on there and just naming the album, Don't Tell Me What To Do. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hey, that could work, man. Right? Well, how about this? If you do, you know, the contest, let us know, and we can get some of our viewers involved. And, sure. Uh, and all that yeah, stuff. we can do that for sure. Cool, man. 
played. J.R. Williams, funny, funny stuff. Thank you so thank much you. for joining us on Ann Arbor tonight. Yeah, thank you and, guys. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, all the best to you, brother. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. to make the morning But I just want to get out of this town Every day I can't help but get this feeling Stars in the sky but I'm still stuck on the ground So every night I pray Pretty much the opposite mood of that. It's kind of sad, and it's about being lonely after you get dumped. And it's called "A Little While." Say 
My name is Fitzy Olsage. This last song is called The Weight, and I just released it two weeks ago on the internet. So I hope you enjoy.
We want everyone in Ann Arbor to be safe. Which is why Ann Arbor has a law requiring drivers to be five feet while passing bicyclists, pedestrians, or wheelchairs traveling on the road. Most traffic lanes within the city are at least 10 feet wide, so give half a lane with this space for safety's sake. This is a good way to measure how much space is required. And if it isn't safe to pass, don't. Be cautious, be patient, and most of all, be safe. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ann Arbor Tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am super excited to welcome C. Olsage, our musical guest. Thank you so much. D did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. I made it. I made it. I mean, right. most people just ask me like five million more times. Oh, okay. And I'll be like, Keel Siege. And I'm like, I wasn't even close to what I said. Keel Siege. Yeah. Come See, on. perfect. Like, it's not that hard. No, but I wanted to ask you really quick, origin of that. Oh, okay. That? Yeah. So, when I was choosing my name, because my real name is Kelsey Dietering, it doesn't exactly flow off the tongue, you know? So I was like, <laughs> sure. okay, I need an artist name that's not that. Right. Probably one word. So I just started, you know, looking on the internet at things. And I think it was actually my mom that found it, because she was like, I was looking for origins of your name, Kelsey. Sure. And I found that seals, it's just the old English derivation of it. Wow. And it means ship's victory. Nice. Which I thought was so cool, because like, yes. I love pirate history and stuff, Arr. and naval history. So I was yeah. like, that's really dope. So. Yeah. I thought people might not be able to say it, but at least they'll like talk about it a lot. So, you well, know, so you get trade-offs. So yeah. yeah, it's so unique and it's so awesome. Seal Uh Do you know what kind of socks pirates wear, by the way? Kind of no idea. Argyle, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. No, I know. I know. Bunch of groans over there. My goodness. Oh my gosh. I feel like that's crowd. a general pun reaction, though. Yeah. It's more of a. Uh, so that's how you know you did your job. You that's know? right. That's a <laughs> tough crowd. I get it. No, uh, so first of all, I wanted to ask you, what first got you interested in music? Well, I feel like I'm not one of those people that had one definitive moment well, where I'm like, this right. is my calling, Boom. you know? It didn't yeah. really happen. It was just kind of always with me since I was mm. a kid. Wow. So my parents say I sang before I talked. As wow. a child, like, sang nonsense goo-goo words, you know, <laughs> <laughs> before I actually talked, so yeah. that. And when I was a kid, I would just listen to albums like all the time. You know, and I'll be, I'd be like four, and I'd be laying on the couch, you know, listening to like the Beatles anthology. Wow! Which was great for my mom because when I did that, she could just chill, you know, and not have to watch me. <laughs> so that was good. That is awesome. Uh, what's one of your favorite Beatles songs? Oh, okay. That's so hard. Yeah. Um, I think. I mean, everyone says. For albums, I gotta start with albums at least. Everyone says Sgt. Pepper's, which like obviously is one of the greatest albums of all time, but yeah. I think Abbey Road is my number one. Totally. So I think if I had to pick one song, it would probably be Here Comes the Sun. Nice. Also because George is my favorite Beatle, so. There you go. Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm a Love Me, Love Me Do fan. I love that oh, book. It's a great beat. I love that as a kid. Oh, yeah. I love the harmonica, so yep. listen to that yeah, a lot. Man. Can't go wrong with the Beatles. So. I'm interested too. I mean, as a singer, I am not really musically inclined, so I'm always interested to know what are some of the biggest things you do to like keep your voice rested, right? Because you sing a lot. Right. So. I think for a singer, it's the biggest thing is singing healthily, mm. which I feel like in rock music is not always the case. Really. Which is why I also teach at School of Rock in Ann Arbor, oh, and okay. I teach the kids. This is how you actually sing healthily, so you don't blow your voice out after one night. So, sure. So there's a technique. Yeah. There. I guess in layman terms, it's just using the right resonance and gotcha. m efficiency, okay. efficiency in singing, so that you don't pull too much from here and blow everything out gotcha. every night. So I think that's the number one thing for me. Sure. Wow. So like, so the rock musicians are doing it all wrong, right? Oh, not <laughs> always, not so, always. Sure. I think you can always tell when someone's singing if they sound strained here, okay. you know, and if they're like doing a lot of this, then you'll know, okay, something's not right going on there. So. They're working a little too yeah, hard. Yeah, looking too hard, for exactly. Sure. Uh, and then being a performer, can you share a funny memory that you have while performing on stage or backstage? Oh, well, this is kind of like a oh no memory, which happened kind of recently when I was playing a show over in Plymouth and I played the entire first song 
with my guitar tuner on, so like there was no sound coming out. Oh my, of my gosh. guitar, which was it was okay because it was a small, it was a pretty small place, so you could still hear like the natural acoustic sound. Okay. But then afterwards, the sound guy came up and was like, "I'm not getting anything from your guitar." <laughs> I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> I have the tuner on still." So oh yeah, goodness. that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, but things happen, and you the show must go on. It must. And you, yeah, you did it, and I'm sure they enjoyed you, you know, over there. So. Well, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure it was fun. So I wanted to know too. I mean. You know, as a musician, why do you feel that Ann Arbor is a great place for music? Well, I think my answer to that would not be an obvious one, you know, because you could talk about the great venues like the Yard, or yep. you could talk about our cool events like Sonic Lunch, yep. shout out to them, which is super awesome. But I think it starts from the education here, and not just the university, obviously, which has an amazing music program, but the Ann Arbor Public Schools, which yep. I went through Ann Arbor Public Schools, and Me I had too. a great time in the music department. I went to Pioneer, shout out Pioneer High. Shout yeah, out shout out High. High. <laughs> shout out Choir, Theater Guild. Yeah, I did right. all that, and it was just, being around other talented people just pushes you to go harder, you know, because you can't just coast through high school like, I'm the best singer <laughs> here, and just get everything handed to you. No, you got to compete the right. whole time, so I think that makes everyone kind of step up their game. Yep. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think that's kind of the seeds of what makes the music here so great. So you have all these people coming out, and then they stay here because the city's so cultured and there's so much art here. So yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. Um, another question that I wanted to ask you too: if you could sing with one other singer, who would that be and why? Okay, this is really hard. Can the person? Do they have to be alive, or can they be like? hypothetically like a dead person no no I mean d dead or alive. dead or alive right, I'll give one of each so I, w I mentioned um, my favorite Beatle George Harrison so I think that'd be my dead choice just because yeah I feel like he's one of those really underrated songwriters who was equally brilliant to right. his counterparts who doesn't always get recognized anyway so singing with him I would probably like die and I would say someone who's alive um, my favorite band right now is Muse oh nice and their lead singer slash a credible pianist and guitarist, Matt Bellamy, who's like incredible at everything. He's, I don't even know. And if I could actually like sing with him sometime, which will probably never happen, but oh, come on. just like the idea of it makes me like melt. Hey, just thinking about it. could totally, you oh, could totally man. do it. You well, know? maybe someday, and then I'll look back at this interview and be like, oh, I can't believe it. So, <laughs> That's right. Well, we never know. That's right. No, yeah, great answers, definitely. So, uh, what is your favorite venue to perform in Ann Arbor? Um, well, I think sound-wise, the Ark. Yeah. It's just an, it's unparalleled. Um, I've never done a full show for myself there, so that's kind of one of my lo goals right now is to sure. be able to get to a point where I could play a show there. Yep. Because, yeah, it just sounds incredible. The acoustics yeah. are, yeah, that, so I would say the Ark. Yeah, and just an incredible energy and history yeah. there, too. Right. Like, when you walk in there, you're just like, yeah. You know, You're like, so many people have stood here and performed here, <laughs> and I'm now one of those people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's awesome. Um, and then for all the young artists out there, I wanted to know, what advice do you have for them? Well, it's an interesting question because I still consider myself a young artist. You too. <laughs> so um, I guess if you're talking about, like, kids, yeah, you know, kids. specifically, yeah. um, I would say go for things because things aren't going to be handed to you. Right. And you learn that more and more as you get older, you know. Even if you have all the talent in the world, you just said, I hope someone will notice me. They're not going to. You have to go for things. You have to bother people a lot. Don't be afraid to bother people because it will pay off. There we so, go. bother people. Yep. And lastly, how can those watching see you perform and or keep up on what you're doing? Well, you can follow me on social media. There That's we are. I mean, everyone <laughs> does that now. That's it's pretty right. much like a must if you're in the entertainment industry. So yep. you can follow me at seal sig music on pretty much every platform so that's c-e-o-l-s-i-g-e seal sig music on twitter instagram facebook heck yeah also seal sig music.com is my website cool and yeah heck yeah so check out seal sig.com and check out uh you know her album out now and her wonderful music and hopefully uh you know you can check her out uh when she is on the road or at a venue near you well, I want to thank you so much. Uh, thank for you being so much for show. having me. Hey, no problem. It's been a pleasure, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We're going to take a quick break, folks, and we'll be right back.